sugar. Okay, start. No. I can't work with this on. That's my, again, I'm going to be cutting out everything. So when you, when you want me to cut and just say start and then go. And if you, like, if you want to audibly give me a pause or a stop, Right? All you gotta do is just say stop and go run to the bathroom or do whatever you have to do and then come back and start. Right? And that way I know where, but I'll be able to see. Yeah, no kidding. I'm all of a sudden I'm not in the <laughs> I'm not in there. <laughs> One thing I like about this is it has stereo. Okay, we're ready. Are we ready? Yeah, oh, going. Okay. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. I got 12 cups of hot water, 60 mils of sugar. This will make hopefully eight loaves. Pinch of soy salt. Hmm. I'm not sure yet. Better measure. Make it one tablespoon of salt. You could use sea salt or salt, whatever. Okay. Now, we gotta do the yeast. Work at that. I will. As soon as I get my. Okay, you need hot water for yeast. So by the time it's ready to rise, it will be warm. How much water? About a half a cup of water, one teaspoon of sugar. into a half a cup of water, a teaspoon of sugar, and then you stir it up and let it rise until it's overflowing to make sure you got it in a, on a saucer or something. Okay, there's our yeast. Now, we put flour until we have a paste like you're doing Paper mache. We get a spoon. Oh, hang on, we need to get a cup measurement. I'm not used to doing this. This is going to take a long time. What's a little shoulder for us? Yeah. So far, I've got eight cups of flour in here. Maybe add more to it? Yeah, we're making a paste, like paper mache stuff, and pour it because we have to add our yeast before we start working it. Okay, this is nine. These are big cups, so 10, maybe 11 cups. Out. 
Well, I'm ready for my yeast, but the yeast is not ready for me, so we've got to wait for it. Yeah, go smoke two cigarettes or something. Yeah. I'm out of here for a bit. Are you watching the yeast rise? <laughs> it's about to the top. Huh? It's about to the top. Oh, I'm shooting in my hand. flowing over but that's good just mix it up it's going to be a little looks little thick in the bottom and just keep mixing it little cake on the bottom but you need to get it so it's runny okay well wait a minute this one's all full Okay, 
poured in. And mix it in. This is still, you've got your paper mache dough. Stuff you'd use for maybe building a volcano or something. touch it and it's not sticking to my fingers. Okay, 11, this is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, Okay, so we've got 20 cups of flour. Now you have to work this in. <coughs> Fold it in. Make sure you get the sides all cleaned up. It's still really sticky, so you still got to add more flour. That's 21. This might just do it, I'm not sure. You have to go by the feel of the dough. And you can't turn it anymore with your spoon. That's when you gotta get in there with your hands. Okay. It's hand time with flour. This is not measured. I'll try. Clean off your spoon using flour. Okay. It's hard to do it when you're not used to measuring. Okay, this is 25 cups. I'm sprinkling it on. I'll use as I go. Get both hands in there. Don't be scared of it. Yeah, you just keep turning it all and flipping it over until you get all that flour all in there. And it's still sticky, so you're going to be adding more. I'm working in the flour right now, that's what I'm doing. And you have to work it in so your hands aren't sticking. 
Then you start adding your, um, clean your bowl on the sides. I usually take the dough out of the bowl, clean the bowl, and then I grease it, put it back in, and then I knead. And don't be scared of punching it once in a while. You know, punch, punch, punch. Grease me. A bit sticky. It could be my hands. I need to clean my hands off. And I use, usually I clean my hands by the sink because you don't want all these hard things in your dough. Because then once it rises up, you're picking it out anyway. Okay, I just have to clean my hands. I use, it um, doesn't matter what kind of lard you want to use, I use tender flake. Right now I'm going to grease another bowl because I have to separate this dough because it's too much for that bowl. So you sort of half it, so you have two bowls going. in the grease into the dough and then you have to grease grease you gotta okay I'm gonna take my dough and I'm gonna stick it in this that I just greased so I can clean this one up just need to get a spatula hard spatula Okay, just keep kneading it. 
just you have to go by feel. Like right now, it's feeling good. Nothing is sticking to me. Actually, it looks like good bread. Don't ask me how I know that because I don't know that. It's just there. <laughs> center. Center. I got Emilio's telling me I need to get in the center. Well, here we go. For the table's sake. Table sake. Okay, that is done. I just have to cut it in half. And put the other half in that other bowl. Just cut a line in the middle and then pull it apart. Like that. Okay, now you need this again to get a nice round ball. All right, when I first started, I used hot water. Right now, this is just warm. That's it. Okay, we need to use a little bit more lard to get the sides, because this is going to rise. You don't want it sticking to your bowl. So put the lard. Coat the bowl, and then you flip this over, make sure you've got a nice round top, and then you need to put some lard on top of that, put it in your hands, rub it on. Now I use cellophane, or um, whatever, clear wrap to put on this. Just hang on, I'll do the other one, and then I'll do both at the same time. Okay, now we have to work the... this all into a nice round ball. I hope you appreciate this, Ernie. Yeah. Yeah. I have to wake Emilio up. He's not feeling very good, but hey. Okay, we've got nice round balls. Put some grease on the side on this one. This one has got, it looks like it's hung on maybe a little bit. You need this stuff on top so when you put the cellophane on it doesn't stick. Because once they rise, I just need to wash my hands. Pieces. I use about three pieces for each one so there's no air getting into it because it will, I don't know what it'll do, but that's how I do things. Okay, that's one bowl done. touching the dough. Two. And three. Okay, bread is done. It's made. Now we wait for it to rise. Take about an hour and a half. bread warm. That's why I cover it. Okay, so we have to cover it all. I have baby blankets. I've got baby receiving blankets. I got blankets. Whatever they are. A large towel would work. Yeah, sheets. No, not a towel. Towels are too heavy. 
or a sheet, like a velvet, not that velvet, um, Pretty sure you still, guys still have receiving blankets around. <laughs> huh? I'm done. For, this is going to take an hour and a half for this to rise. In the meantime, clean up your mess. That's it for now. End of segment one. End of segment one. This is the first time. He's slow taking this off so it doesn't all come though it doesn't all come on. If you do have some, don't worry about it. Put some uh, lard on your hands and then you go in. And then you knead, you crunch, whatever. You get all the air out. And the more you knead, the better it is. Round and round. Go. I remember the last time you went into the hospital. Mm -hmm. I made bread. Remember you had bacon? Yeah. I'm hoping. Gosh, it doesn't sound good. I don't know. But you know, she's so stubborn. She doesn't like the hospital. No. And her skin is so thin that the needles and stuff. Well, that's when they should be sticking uh, an IV in right away. That way she doesn't have to get a bunch of needles. They just well, go through do, the IV. But they right? try to find a vein. Okay, now you flip, after you need to flip it over, make a ball. Put your, put your plastic stuff back on. And that one's done. Put that over there. Bring this one over here. See how high that is? Slowly take off your stud thing. I didn't put any lard on top, so I'm going to take that off again. And put some more lard on there. Okay. Pass back, and that'll be it for about 45 minutes. Not about that. Make sure you have a warm room because you need the heat to for this to rise. So step back. And you cover it up again. And that's it. I've um, put lard on my pans that I'm going to use. So just make sure they're well greased. You don't want your bread sticking, otherwise you're going to have a mess. Okay, now I'm hoping I get enough bread for, I have enough bread to make seven. You never know me. I either have lots or I don't have enough. Okay, here we go. Cut a piece off. Make sure it's a good loaf, and then you fold in, fold in, fold in, fold in. Okay, get all the bubbles off. 
out making a loaf. Fold in, fold in, fold in. See? Slow down. That's how you do it. Fold in, fold in, fold in. You can see yourself. Yeah. I know. Okay. Okay? Ernie, you've seen me do this for years. Okay, into the pan. Make sure you push it down so all sides are in, and then you take your bread, you fold it over, just push it over. And make sure it's round. Push it down flat. Okay, make sure you get enough dough to make a loaf. It should be about half the pan, the height of the pan. Okay, this one's going to be a good one. It's either too big or too small. <laughs> You fold, you fold, you fold. In, in, in. And making the top smooth. And getting rid of air. And getting rid of all the bubbles. Then you push it in. You still get bubbles, so you make sure you're just like kneading it in your pan. Flip it over. Make sure you have a nice smooth top. That would be a nice big roll. Stop. Fold in the ends and the sides, make sure that they're down. Otherwise, your loaves are going to be all uneven. Okay, it looks like we've got enough for. I'm getting my eight loaves that I said I was going to get. If you don't have bread pans, you can buy your pie plates, you can use anything. Or you can make buns, you can make whatever. How you fold. You fold, you fold, you fold. And you squeeze the ends. This is just getting air out of the dough. Okay? There you go. Push it down. Just let it rise until it's double or double and a half. You put your um, oven at 375 
and you bake it for 45 minutes. That's that. Done. And cover your bread when you've had, um, when you put them in pans, because you need more warmth to keep the bread rising. Okay. And that's that's it. That's how it's done. Okay. This is the last batch of bread. You just make sure that it's brown on the bottom and it's perfect. So how long should they sit to cool? Until they're cold. Until they're cold. Until they're cold. Because once you freeze them, they're still warm. Cool. You've got a lot of crystals. Yeah. Okay. So this is the last batch. I won't uh, put it in the bags until tonight at around 9 o'clock, and it's 3.30 now. So. Okay. Okay, you have to put... Um, Brush some butter on top or some hot milk or warm milk. I use butter, so it's up to the person that's making it. And that's it. And what does that do? It just keeps it, the, this, it'll just soften up. It keeps it from cracking up. Like we have a few cracks on this one, but otherwise it'll be all cracked and hard. And okay. That's what it looks like when you put the butter on. It sort of relaxes it and it doesn't crack. 